What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to the recap. Technically a recap because we're talking about All-Star Reserves. Forget the setting. I know this is different, but the upstairs studio is being cleaned, and we have to talk right here, right now. I thought I was going to have to wait until TNT gave up the, the reserves, but nope, Shams like, I'm going to drop it on the timeline, which for the first time, I am saying thank you to Shams for spoiling something. I hate the dramatic pauses and the dramatic reveals of TV, and Shams like, here you go, y'all, y'all ain't got to watch TNT today, which is a lot different than the NBA draft where I'm hoping that he doesn't spoil it, you know what I'm saying? So leave a like, subscribe if you're new, please, please, please use that comment section because there's no better dialogue than all-star things because we definitely have snubs. We definitely have people that you may believe deserve to make it over others. So use that comment section. We have this great community that can have this conversation. If you're unaware of who the reserves are, let me fill you in. For the Western Conference, we have Chris Paul, Paul George, Damian Lillard, Donovan Mitchell, Rudy Gobert, Zion Williams, the first-time All-Star, and then Anthony Davis, who probably would get an injury replacement. And then for the Eastern Conference, we have James Harden, Julius Randle, first-time, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, first-time, Zach Levine, first-time, Ben Simmons, and Nikola Vucevic makes it back again. Wow, there are a few players when I immediately saw this, I was like, I am so surprised this player didn't make it. But then you have to come to the realization for player A who got snubbed to make it, somebody got to drop out. And that is the hardest decision for me because a lot of the things that we see in basketball is so situational. You know, it's so, so very situational. So I'm not going to say player X deserve, didn't deserve to make it over player Y. It, it's not, that's not what we're here for. But I do want to talk about some of the people who did make it and talk about some of the snubs. The biggest one, uh, maybe not the biggest snub, but the biggest surprise to me was the Trey Young thing until I kind of realized what last year was. Last year, you have to remember, he was an all-star starter. And when it comes to the starters, it is a lot fan-driven. There is a media component and there's a player's component, right? Reserves are like the coaches deciding. The coaches do not like Trey Young. And I'm sure a lot of y'all watching these videos don't like the way Trey Young plays basketball. Think about the first week of the season, y'all. Trey Young's idol, new coach Steve Nash, came out and said, This ain't basketball, bro. And if Steve Nash is the one that was brave enough to say it amongst coaches. You cannot tell me that Greg Popovich plays against the, the Atlanta Hawks and he's like, You know what? That guy's doing great things. Greg Popovich probably is disgusted with the way the foul drawing Trey Young does. But it is a part of the game, right? There is added value to his team by him playing like that. But at the end of the day, it doesn't have the respect of the other coaches. So him being snubbed was a surprise to me until I really took a step and thought about it. But then again, who do you take him over on these All Stars? A lot of people I've been seeing on Twitter are trying to uh, take away Ben Simmons' spot and take away Nikola Vucevic's spot and let me make the cases for these guys. I think I, I think it was on No Donks, a podcast I listen to almost daily. They were comparing what Ben Simmons does to make him an all-star versus what Kyle Lowry did to make him an all-star all these many years. Kyle Lowry has never put up amazing, crazy stats, but he was a lot of the time all-star locks because we know that Kyle Lowry is the engine of that team. Maybe it's not the same anymore because they're 6-0 without him this season, but he was the engine to that team that we saw the Toronto Raptors. They didn't win a championship to Kawhi Leonard got there, but when it comes to regular season success, Cal Lowry, DeMar DeRozan, those guys were winning regular season games. And that's what Ben Simmons is I think now. And then you really think about it. The coaches love the defensive aspect. Ben Simmons is the defensive player of the year candidate. So the counting stats may not be there for Ben Simmons, but what does help him, and I mentioned this on the episode ago, like two weeks ago, he has a way to elevate his play right before those votes come in for him to get that all-star appearance. The last month he's averaging, well, not the last month, the last five or so games, he's averaging 29. That's unheard of for Ben Simmons in a long stretch. So he got hot at the right time. Same thing with Julius Randle. He got hot at the right time. And same thing with Nikola Vucevic. I had the stats here because we talked about this on my podcast. But Julius Randle was averaging like almost 30 points per game over the last five. And then they're 4-1 with him and averaging those type of things. And then Vucevic's case is like, listen, bro, we had um, Evan Fournier miss a lot of time. Markel Fultz is gone. Uh, John Isaac is gone. Aaron Gordon is gone, and guess what? In the last five games, my team is 4-1 and one because I do literally everything for us. That is his case. Now, does that case is that case stronger than DeMontis Sabonis' case is the real question. Now, when you think about NBA All-Star Reserve picks, historically, they decide typically, because it is coaches, they prioritize winning. Who is the best guy on a winning team? The Pacers are undoubtedly a winning team. They did have this stretch where they were like 1-5 and five in their last six, and it might have hurt Sabonis' case, but Sabonis is putting up great numbers on a good team that is a playoff team, like a, a playoff lock team. And it, it, it has been that for many, many years. So I can understand the Indiana Pacers fans upset about Sabonis not making it for sure. It is crazy to think about this Eastern Conference team. Um, and I, I, I think I saw this on Twitter as well, where Kemba Walker, Trey Young, and Pascal Siakam were starters last season. Two of them weren't even in the conversation. 
Like Pascal had his moment. Like Pascal has been good this season. Do not get me wrong. But at the end of the day, you have to remember we're talking about team success, and this team took a long time to be successful. And even in that, they're just over 500. Right, so I don't even know if were our Raptors fans upset that Pascal to make it this year. Are they upset that that maybe Fred? I think maybe Fred Van Vliet probably had a better case than Pascal Siakam this season. But who really knows? Three of the last year's starters are gone, and they are replaced with first year guys. You know, Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum has been a conflict um, amongst NBA fans on Twitter. It seems like like are the Celtics good enough to have two All Stars? Um, but I I would say yes when you consider the rest of their team hasn't done anything. You know what I'm saying? Where it's a lot of nights, it is Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. So I, I, I'm not upset about that. I'm happy my boy Zach Levine is in that thing. Never in doubt. Never in doubt. Thought he was going to make it. Thought he was going to make it. So um, I, like I said, there there's not a lot of conflict for me because I don't know who you drop out to make other things work. For the Western Conference, now things get interesting because Anthony Davis is injured and is expected to miss a lot of time. We have one extra spot and this is where people are penciling in Devin Booker, but you also have to think about like DeMar DeRozan. DeMar DeRozan is putting up ridiculously great stats on a team that is all, he is in a similar boat of DeMontis Sabonis. Obviously the play styles and positions are different, but he's putting up great stats on a winning team. And if you ask me, this team is excelling more than even, I think a lot of people expected it to. But DeMar DeRozan slash the San Antonio Spurs are always under the radar. They always are. You know, together, DeMar is always on. I remember two, three years ago, Sports Illustrated put out their top 100 players in the NBA, and they had, like, DeMar DeRozan in, like, the 80s range. DeMar DeRozan in the 80s range? Under the radar there, and then he also plays in San Antonio under the radar, other than them having Tim Duncan, one of the greatest players of all time. They've historically been an under-radar team. So I don't know if Devin Booker is pencil in. You know? I don't know. Do the coaches respect what Devin Booker is doing over what DeMar DeRozan is doing? Who would I have in there? It'll probably be D-Book. It would probably be D-Book. But if it ended up being DeMar, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't think it's going to be Brandon Ingram. Um, the Pelicans aren't good enough to get two All-Stars, at, at least I don't think. And they brought in Zion Williamson. People are conflicted about Chris Paul, which tells me you aren't watching Suns games. If you're conflicted that Chris Paul deserves to be an All-Star, that is my favorite thing about this one, other than Zach Levine being a first-time All-Star, that two years in a row Chris Paul has, this, has defied the odds, if you want to say that, and become an All-Star player after a couple years of not making it at all. A lot of that is due to him being healthier, and a lot of that is due to him being able to go to teams that may have not projected to be very good and elevate them like if you think about the losses they've had this season a lot of them are like single digit losses it's very rare that the phoenix suns are getting blown out of the water other than that game that they blew by tw by 20 but you get what i'm saying chris paul is not a counting stats guy he's a winning guy and you know who loves winning the goddamn coaches who are picking the reserve so paul george i don't have to explain his case to you um he's been amazing when he's healthy and he's on the court damian lillard I would argue he deserved to be a starter, but who really cares? At the end of the day, when you look at resumes, it says all-star. It doesn't say all-star starter. Donovan mentioned Rudy Gobert, lock, best team in the NBA record-wise. And, and Rudy Gobert, again, doesn't have the counting stats, but he is probably the front-runner for Defensive Player of the Year again this year. And then Zion becomes the first player in the in the born in 2000s to make an all-star appearance. Think about that. The first player born in the 2000s to make an all-star appearance. So I think that they gave us a combination of, because sometimes I wonder like this, the goal of an all-star game, is it to get the fans excited to watch basketball or is it try to help the accolades of the best players in the league? Because at the end of the day, when people are trying to potentially get into the Hall of Fame, they use these type of accolades, 10-time all-star, 12-time all-star type thing. So are we trying to get the best players in the NBA or are we trying to put together a good show? I think they may have gave us a combination of those things. You know, there are some players here that maybe are kind of boring to watch. Like, let's let's be honest. You got to be a super, super, super big NBA nerd to be like, yes, Rudy Gobert, all-star game. Well, his job is to roll to the basket and block shots. Um, but obviously, he's deserving. He's one of the top 24 most impactful players in the NBA right now. So um, very interesting things. I guess we'll find out sooner rather than later who's going to be that reserve. But let me know in that comment section, man, who snubbed in your eyes um, because you can make some cases. You could definitely make some cases. I'm just happy my boy Zach Levine is in there because – he deserves it. I appreciate y'all. We'll be back in the normal setup next episode. I, trust me. Trust me. Because I know the, the lighting in here is bad. The camera ain't as good. But you see some of the collectibles in the back. All right. Love y'all. See you soon. Peace. Call game.